The final task for this project is to let the user assign favorites to resorts they like. This is mostly straightforward using techniques we've already covered, creating a new favorites class that has a set of resort IDs the user likes, giving it add, remove, and contains methods that manipulate the data, sending update notifications to Swift UI, while also saving any changes to user defaults, then injecting an instance of the favorites class into the environment, and adding some new UI to call the appropriate methods. Swift sets already contain methods for adding, removing, and checking for an element, but we're going to add our own around them so we can use object will change to notify Swift UI that changes occurred, and also call a save method so the user's changes are persisted. This in turn means we can mark the favorite set using private access control so we can't accidentally bypass our methods and miss out saving. Create a new Swift file called favorites.swift. Replace its foundation and port with Swift UI, then give it this code. Class favorites conforms to observable object. First, we'll make a set of the actual resorts the user's favorited. We'll say private var resorts is a set string. Second, we'll make a string property to store the key we're using to read and write values in user defaults. We'll say private let save key equals favorites. Then initializer, I put a comment here saying load our save data. And if we're still here, we'll use an empty array. Self.resorts equals empty array. Next, we'll add a method to return true if our set contains a resort. We'll say func contains underscore resort resort returns bool. And we'll pass it onto our resort set by saying resorts.contains resort.id. Next, another method to add the resort to our set updating all views and saving the change. So func add underscore resort resort. We'll call object.change.send to notify Swift UI there's a change. Then insert that resort ID into our set and call save. We'll add a fourth method to remove the resort from our set. Again, update all views and save the change. So we'll say func remove underscore resort resort. Object will change.send. Resorts.remove Resort.id, then save. And finally, a save method, func save, and a comment, write out our data. Now you'll notice I've missed out the actual functionality for loading and saving favorites. That'll be your job to fill in shortly. We need to create a favorites instance in content view and inject it into the environment so all views can share it. So add this new property to content view. At observed object, var favorites equals favorites. Now inject it into the environment by adding this modifier to the navigation view. Environment object, favorites. Because that's attached to the navigation view, every view the navigation view presents will also gain that favorites instance to work with. So we can load it from inside resort view by adding this new property. At environment object, var favorites, favorites. All this work hasn't really accomplished much yet. Sure, the favorites class gets loaded when the app starts, but it isn't actually used anywhere despite having properties to store it. This is easy enough to fix. We're going to add a button at the end of the scroll view in resort view, so users can either add or remove the resort from their favorites. Then display a heart icon in content view for favorite resorts. First, add this to the end of the scroll view in resort view. Button, if favorites contains resort, then remove from favorites. Otherwise, add to favorites. If self.favorites.contains self.resort, self.favorites.remove self.resort. Else, self.favorites.add self.resort. With some padding around it. Now we can show a colored heart icon next to favorite resorts in content view by adding this to the end of the navigation link. If self.favorites.contains resort spacer image system name heart.fill accessibility label text this is a favorite resort foreground color dot red. As you can see, the foreground color modifier works great here because our image uses SF symbols. And that mostly works, but you might see a small glitch. 
If you favorite resorts with longer names, you might find their name wraps onto two lines even though there's space for it all to be on one. This is yet another example where SwiftUI's layout system allocates too much priority to spaces and not enough to text. So the fix for now, hopefully until Apple solves it soon, is to adjust the layout priority of the vStack directly before the condition we just added. Layout priority one. That should make the text layout correctly even with the spacer and heart icon. It's much better. And that also finishes our project. So give it one last try and see what you think. Good job.